Hello, art lovers. Welcome to my painting channel. I'm Pete Bain, and today I'll be doing a full demonstration of this 12 by 16 inch still life painting with lemons. Now, if you're like me, you spend a lot of time looking at art in books, museums, and of course, on Instagram. And lately, I've been so inspired by some of the amazing still lives I've seen. What I love about still lives is that they form a small, intimate world created by a simple but beautiful arrangement of everyday objects. And they bring a sense of home and comfort. So with this painting, I've arranged a series of lemons, a stovetop coffee maker, and a green ribbon, all set against a white background. Now, if you like these demonstrations, please subscribe to the channel. Click the thumbs up button. I would be thrilled if you would leave a comment. Perhaps you could tell me what other types of videos you would like to see. Anyways, I'm so happy to show you and share with you how I created this painting in a step-by-step -step process. So let's jump right into it. All right, a quick look at my palette before we begin. I'm using liquid as my medium. Uh, my white is a combination of titanium and zinc from Permelba. Cadmium red pale, alizarin crimson, uh, cadmium yellow pale, cadmium lemon. I think you'll need both of those yellows for this particular project with all of the, um, the beautiful lemon and yellow colors. Uh, I have yellow ochre pale, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, transparent red oxide, gamsol for thinning my paint while I do the toning of the canvas and my drawing, and also for cleaning the brushes, of course, and a selection of filbert brushes. And here is a look at this still life that I set up that I'm actually painting now. Uh, I love that the bright, saturated color of the lemons really pops. Uh, I like the rhythm of the shapes of those lemons as they march horizontally across the table. The stovetop coffee maker provides a nice solid vertical and the shiny surface reflects those lemons. And, and then the green ribbon runs through the entire display tying everything together. I chose a Lisburn Crimson to tone my canvas with because I wanted a really a contrasting color to come through the uh, some of the background and some of the foreground and I, I usually use yellow ochre for this uh, step but I, I thought that was too similar in color to the lemons and I really um, I was I thought it was important in this still life to have a little bit of a, uh, interest in the uh, in both the foreground and, and the background that back wall because there is so much of that negative space showing Right. And so I thought uh, it'd be nice to have something, something that popped out a little bit. The drawing was fairly straightforward with this painting in that I had to draw the, uh, the coffee maker first because I wanted to really place that uh, so that the vertical height filled up the canvas, filled up the space of the canvas. Um, and, and that coffee maker is essentially a rectangle, uh, which is a little bit more than two times as tall as it is wide. So once I had the little coffee maker placed on the canvas, everything else came fairly straightforward because they all, everything touches and it has, has solid relationships to one another. I was able to uh, drop in those uh, oval shapes for the lemons, the marching lemons, and the edge of the table there. Uh, although you can see, as I'm rubbing out some areas, uh, there's always corrections to make, but uh, this took me maybe, uh, it definitely took me less than 10 minutes to get the drawing done. Once I'm satisfied with the drawing, I can move right into the block in of the various components of the still life, and I began with the lemons as an obvious choice. Note that I'm not concerned very much with the color at this point in the painting. Uh, I'll be making several more layers of paint where I will be uh, really focused on color, but here I, I really want to nail the value uh, relationships amongst each of these lemons, uh, and I want that to be very accurate. Uh, and I'm not focusing on just a single lemon as I do this, I'm moving all around the canvas, and I, I feel that that's very helpful to me as I uh, make decisions on, on where those values are, where their correct values are. Um, and I'm also trying to be mindful and paint thinly at this stage. My goal is to 
complete this painting in several hours and additional layers of thick paint which are coming coming along later uh, thick fat paint lays down on top of the thinned layers much more easily As I move through this block and, and work through the various components of the setup, the arrangement, I hope you notice that I, I'm using a number six brush and I'm, I'm not focusing on detail, just major, major shapes, major value changes. Um, I, I, I'm starting here with the, the shadows. I've mixed up a violet and added a little bit of yellow ochre pale to, to make it, uh, to push it towards a gray color. And uh, yeah, it, it's just very loose, very chunky, uh, big shapes, big accurate values, accurate drawing. I'm not too worried about color or any detail whatsoever at this point. Just get that canvas covered uh, as quickly and as accurately as possible is my goal. Both the tablecloth Actually, it's a pillowcase, uh, but the we'll call it a tablecloth. The, the tablecloth and the the wall behind the still life setup play a, a pretty significant role, just because there, there's quite a lot of it there. There's a lot of this real estate, or and uh, it, it's serving as negative space uh, on which the lemons, the the ribbon, and the coffee maker come sort of pop. Uh, but but because there's so much of it, uh, I, I don't want it to be boring. I don't want it to look like uh, we painted the wall with a can of Benjamin Moore wall paint or anything. I, I want it to have a little bit of interest, uh, but not detract from what's going on with, with the objects. So to that end, I'm trying uh, to, to really reserve some of that lovely the pinkish color of the toned canvas when, when I toned it with the alizarin crimson that was one of my intentions so so here I'm trying to re uh, preserve some of it without looking too deliberate and cutesy uh, so that so there's a, a little bit of a balancing act uh, but we'll see as I as I progress how I do with, with that goal well, the blocking is complete and I'm ready to add another layer of paint to this piece uh, where I can get more accurate in my drawing with my values and with my colors. But I found that I've got a bit too much thick paint on the canvas. So I'll simply scrape off the heavy paint with my palette knife. And I really love this process because it softens the edges of the shapes and merges um, uh, shapes in into one another and simplifies them. The effect is just a much less fussy and a, a dreamy feel to the, to the piece. So uh, it serves a, as a re reminder uh, as to what my goal is for the painting. Okay, as I just mentioned, with this next layer of paint, I want to get closer in accuracy with my shapes with my values and also of my colors. Uh, and, and the first step in this second layer of paint is to, I always reestablish my dark values. Uh, the series of darks, the dark shapes that tie, knit, knit the painting together, they serve as a, the skeleton or the backbone of the painting. And that skeleton can get a bit diluted during the block in and, and subsequent scraping down of the heavy paint. I encourage you to lay your paint down deliberately with one or two strokes, just like a mason lays down cement. Uh, you, you're putting it down thickly on top of the, the previous layer. Uh, you're, uh, what, what you shouldn't be doing is uh, going back and forth and, and just making mud on your canvas. Uh, think of these as little paint chips 
and, uh, and, and just lay them down. Uh, mix them accurately on your palette. Uh, pull them within your your your, your brush and, um, and and lay it lay it down deliberately and thoughtfully. Don't don't overwork it on the canvas. That that can result in mud, a, a muddy, um, valueless, colorless blob that you won't be satisfied with. And uh, yeah, just try to be mindful of that. Uh, during during this second layer process, so you can see that I'm. I'm, I'm rechecking my table edge line, the horizon line, if you will, and I'm just simply using my brush to go uh, to, to measure it out across the canvas, and, and I, I highly encourage that as well. I think that's a that's a big pet peeve for me when when the horizon line or a table edge is is not straight, and um, it's it's just just kind of sloppy uh, and an easy easy thing to get right simply by using your brush as a ruler. Here I'm also uh, accentuating the change uh, in plane, the, the, the flat plane of the tabletop with the uh, horizontal plane of the wall behind it. Uh, I'm putting just a little dark edge along there. At this point in the painting, I'm turning to the lemons and their color and trying to get more accuracy and really push that, uh, that, that burst of beautiful uh, and, and that, that lovely range of yellows and yellow ochres and oranges and reds that I can see within them. There's really just a whole universe of, of colors and tones there. And having, having both uh, cadmium lemon and cadmium yellow pale on my palette and yellow ochre and a cadmium red is really really useful in trying to replicate that that lovely range of colors and saturations within the, the fruit. I really love this ribbon as a component which ties all the various pieces together in, in the still life but to be honest with you I was looking for a blue or purple ribbon to serve as a complement, complementary color to the to the lemons. I could only find this green ribbon in our Christmas, uh, one of our Christmas tote bins in the basement. So I I, stu I stuck with that, and, it, and I really love the way it worked out. Uh, it's an analogous color to the yellow, so it's a really uh, a, a beautiful scheme of colors. Uh, but, but when you're painting it, just definitely note how it influences the uh, the shadows beneath it, how it how it relates to the uh, the yellows uh, of the lemons around it as well. Take take a close observation there and try to make that accurate. This is an exciting point within the painting process because I can see the finish line, it's in sight, and I am at this point trying to push those, those yellows, those bright yellows, trying to get some highlights, uh, really refining some edges, blurring some, crisping up others, just moving across the entire painting and, and making it come to life with these finishing touches. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot of fun at this point. Um, so I'm doing my best really to, to, to make those yellows pop. That's what, that, I feel like that's what this is all about. We've got seven, seven lovely shapes, seven, seven ovals with various tones of yellows and ochres and oranges and making them just, just look ripe and full, ha having a three-dimensional form, something that you, some, that's really tangible is, is my goal here. And uh, yeah, so have fun at this point. Um, really dig into the thick paint, uh, and uh, don't don't overset. Don't 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 use too much white when you when you're putting on these colors. That'll that'll bring up chalkiness. Uh, it doesn't make things brighter. The color white. So so try to resist uh, at, uh, any white at this point when you when you're putting that color into the lemons. After about four hours of painting, I put my brushes down and and stood back and took a look at, the, at at my painting and evaluated it and I was pretty pleased. Here it is laying on the floor and I'm really pleased with it but I wasn't blown away. So uh, 
Upon returning to the studio the next day, I decided that I could make those lemons even brighter, cleaner, more saturated color. And so that's what I've, I'm doing at this point. I'm going right back into them, uh, simplifying the, some of the brush strokes. I, I also felt it was a little bit too fussy. Um, so uh, it, and I hadn't it really achieved the effect I wanted. I hadn't brought a, a full bright light onto the entire, on, on, across the entire canvas. So here I go. Uh, I'm bringing the value up of both uh, the, the bright side of the lemon and also within the shadows, lightening those up a little bit. Um, and I will also work on the foreground somewhat, which will help make everything just sing with light and color and freshness. All right, so this is the finished, finished painting, and I'm so pleased with it now. Uh, I've laid it on the floor to take this photo where it receives so much light, and I think it looks just great. I can't wait to pop it into a frame and see how it looks there. Um, I, I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and thank you so much for watching. Uh, I, I ask you, please leave a comment, hit the like button, and subscribe. These things mean so much to me as, as I try to build this little uh, painting and art channel and create more videos for you.